Hi again then guys and welcome to another look back to the world of Forza Motorsport 4 once again of course and this vehicle is one which some of us could probably easily forget is not around anymore in Forza and actually funnily enough it's not around in that many games at all across the board even though at the time it was a very popular choice. Now if I recall correctly I think this car was in Midnight Club 3 dub edition certainly in this game of course as well and a couple of others too if I recall correctly I think Test Drive Unlimited 1 also, they had this one and the open top, and is of course the Lamborghini Murcielago. Now, before you dive down to the comments to correct my pronunciation of Murcielago, because it's one of the most commonly mispronounced cars around, I would recommend you do a Google search first, because there are tutorials out there to actually pronounce it properly. Now, as far as this vehicle goes, you could technically call it the LP580 in rough terms, although nobody does because of course that wasn't the actual designation, but if you follow the Lamborghini lineage, especially after this, with the LP640, LP670, even the Gallardo range with the LP560 etc, this is essentially an LP580. That is the PS level of the car. Of course, the horsepower is slightly lower than that, 575, which is still very healthy. And last time I checked, a Murcielago of this generation was actually one of the highest mileage supercars in the world. It was featured in Evo magazine years ago, in fact, and it had something like 200,000 miles on the clock, which is insane for a car like this. And I would hate to imagine the running costs of something like that. But I mean, fair play to the guy, clearly loves the car. And in terms of performance, of course, it was very strong at the time. Now, most of us tend to remember the LP640 much more fondly than this one. The LP640 is my favorite Lambo of this lineage. The LP670, of course, has a lot of appeal because it is the hardcore SV. You've got the Reventon, which is tangentially based on it. This one, though, doesn't get as much love. But one of my favorite things about it is the purity. It has that clean, smooth, original design, and it really does look like a fantastic follow-up to the Diablo, which is exactly what this car was, that top-tier flagship for Lamborghini, and look how long it lasted them. Just like the Gallardo, it had a fantastic life with multiple different generations, and one of the things I love the most about it is that unlike a lot of supercars and hypercars these days, such as Bugatti and even what Lamborghini does now, unfortunately, with the Aventador and the Centenario and all of those endless variations, is that back then, these variations felt like they actually meant something. There was a huge difference between this, the LP640, and then the LP670, and of course the Reventon as well. Likewise with the Gallardo, the Superleggera felt legitimately needed in the range. These days though you've got all of these variations with like 10 horsepower more, 15 kilos less, maybe a slightly larger wing, and I do find it a bit boring in the vast majority of cases, whereas in the mid 2000s when this car comes from, the majority of supercars had some fantastic variations and that was about it. This one had the LP640 and the SV of course, the Mercedes SLR had the fantastic 722 and of course the Sterling Moss, but those models seem to me at least to be much more iconic. And maybe it's just me looking back, but the prices, for instance, certainly seem to back me up on that. Now in terms of what this car could do in Forza 4 compared to what it maybe for instance might do now, it was a good car back then, but it was almost immediately overshadowed by those newer cars once you got to games like Forza 4. And if I recall correctly, I think the LP640 was a unicorn car. I believe in this game, it was either, either this one or Forza 3. I don't remember which one, but it very quickly got overshadowed because of course, most people will choose the faster one. And when the Aventador came around, well, it was game over. So many people fell in love with the Aventador so quickly that this one became kind of a moot point. And I honestly think that that's a shame because I still prefer this car over any Aventador and I love the kind of handling manners that it has combined with great performance. And if you actually consider how fast it is, 205 miles an hour, 0 to 60 in about 3.8 seconds, that's very strong for a car with 575 horsepower, especially in the mid 2000s. Supercars and hypercars were not necessarily what they are now. They were very good, but they weren't as quick as many of them are today. And of course you didn't have hybrid technology most of the time, this one certainly didn't. You just had a very dependable 6.2 litre V12, naturally aspirated power, as I said 575, also a healthy 479 pound-feet of torque. And even though the car was relatively heavy, in fact, 
let's be honest, it's very heavy in this game, 1830 kilos. I'm not sure if that's actually accurate to real life, that seems a bit too high, but Either way, that's how much it weighs in the game. Now, in terms of the category of the car, it's S-Class, which isn't too surprising, 610 PI points, but of course, you can do a ton with it, especially in terms of power. It's already all-wheel drive, so you can easily put all of that power down. If you do convert it to, for instance, rear-wheel drive, you can have yourself a pretty nice little Balboni-style drifter, and of course, that will lower the PI level and allow you to do some other tuning to it without bumping up into, for instance, one of the R classes. Now, in terms of the chances of this car coming back, for instance, in Horizon 4 or whatever the next Forza game turns out to be, I would say that the chances are very, very slim. And in some cases, that's why it's a perfect opportunity to review cars like this. I could see this one coming back. You know, if I did see it show up in, for instance, Horizon 4, it wouldn't surprise me too much, but at the same time, I don't think it's likely to happen. There are definitely other cars, I think, which would have a stronger chance. However, if it were to come back, I think a lot of OG fans would be pretty happy about that. It's not the quickest thing around anymore, but it's a fantastic rival to stuff like the Porsche Carrera GT, of course the Mercedes SLR, and a number of other cars from the time, your Enzos, your MC12s, and it can still kick it with those cars. And one of the crucial advantages that this car had, and this was really something that would go on to become a staple of Lamborghini is that this and the Gallardo, the original with around 500 horsepower, they both set the modern trend of all-wheel drive Audi-based Lambos. And we know where that got us because look where they are now. This car, along with that early 2000s Gallardo, is arguably what allowed them to reach the point that they're at now. It was the popularity and the performance and just the brilliant all-round ability of these cars in the early 2000s that allowed Lambo to really turn things around under that new guidance and leadership to make them much stronger than you could say Lamborghini ever was purely from a business standpoint before. In terms of ability in the game, it's a fantastic car. Now, the only downside I'll say to this car is it feels too heavy on the front end. It feels like it has way too much grip to those front wheels, maybe even a little bit too much torque and power, which is surprising given that it's not all that powerful to begin with, certainly not by today's standards at least, but it's not difficult to drive by any stretch. And to be honest, even that fact must have shocked a lot of long-standing Lamborghini fans in the earlier 2000s because typically Lambos are known for being challenging and borderline dangerous. The Diablo is one of the most dangerous supercars ever built. And then you have this, something which has all of that raw, screaming brutality of a, a Carrera GT, the sheer power and performance of an SLR, but at the same time, all-wheel drive and surprisingly forgiving handling and Audi, you know, German tech underneath which, you know, Lambo wasn't offering that kind of package before. So it's not difficult to see why they've become so, so popular and so much more stable now than they ever were before. Ultimately, it's a fantastic car. I know a lot of you guys really do love this original, and for me, it is one of my favorite Lambos for sure. The LP640 still has the edge for me, but don't discount the original. This set the trend in many ways for what Lamborghini is today. But overall, that's it for this pick. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.